What's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel. This is another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content on the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Um, Ravens content coming at you pretty much on a daily basis. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Um, I just wanted to take some time to talk about some Raven training camp takeaways as uh, the season is right around the corner. And um, obviously, training camp isn't completely finished, but the part that's open to the media, the part that's open to the fans is pretty much over and done with. So what can we take away from what we've seen and what we've heard so far and how that's going to translate to the Ravens season? Now, obviously, the Ravens play tonight uh, versus the Cardinals, and we'll have some takeaways from that game as well. But let's just focus on everything we know from um, the, the before the Cardinals game, you know, to the start of training camp, right? So first off, we want to start with the big news for the Ravens, the injuries, right? Um, I think the Ravens are going to be close to pretty much full strength when it comes to week one. We're talking about guys like, uh, St uh, not sorry, uh, Dobbins is already back. Marcus Peters is back. Ronnie Stanley, I think he'll be close to, to playing week one. Um, he hasn't officially been removed off the pup list yet, but the way it's sounding, the way they're making it seem, hopefully he's close to coming off that list. Now, obviously, a guy like Tyler Lindebaum, who was hurt during training camp, I think he'll be back. So, the Ravens, we know what the health status was going into week one last year, and it wasn't pretty. So far, so far, they're on track to be in a way better position this year than last year. So that's all we can really hope for when it comes to that. All right. Now, offensively, what are some takeaways? Uh, we want to start with, we're going to start at the top, man. Lamar Jackson. I think he's primed to have probably his best season ever. We're talking about a guy that's came in in better shape. Not, not that he was ever in bad shape, so I don't want to say it like that. But gained 20 pounds of muscle, up to 228. Throwing the ball better than he's ever thrown it. Sharper, more velocity, more accuracy. Um, and last year, I thought he threw the ball best that he's ever thrown it. So he keeps getting better. So if he can throw the ball better than he did last year, he's in for a big prime time type of season. And I know people are going to say, what about the weapons and things like that? And I, I, I get all of that. But with the way Lamar Jackson is, the way that he has uh, comfort in this offense, I know we're all not a fan of this offense, and I get that. But he's going to operate it at a high level. I honestly and truly believe that. Uh, so he's in a position with everything he's done in the, in the offseason, with all the hard work he's put in with his QB coach, getting better, with all the hard work he's put in with his personal trainer, um, you know, making his body stronger, making his arm stronger as well. I mean, he already had a crazy arm. Now it's even better than before. He's in for a really, really good season, right? And, I, I, and you know, I think that's going to be more on the passing the ball side than running the ball. I don't expect Lamar Jackson to, you know, run for 1,200 yards again. Honestly, as a Ravens fan, I'm not really interested in seeing that. I'm more interested in seeing him, the passing game, take that next step and to keep evolving. Last year, they made some major strides. I really think they did. Um, so I want to see that keep going. Okay. Now, the second takeaway from the offensive side of the ball is that just from the training camp and everything we'll be hearing and everything like that, the Ravens are going to have no choice but to play Isaiah Likely a lot. They're going to have no choice. He's leaving them with no option. The way he's playing, the way he's practicing, you can't keep a guy like that off the field because you're only doing a detriment to your team. So, honestly, I, when, I, when, I, when I was going into the season, I was thinking that the Ravens were going to do, you know, a lot of three wide receiver, one tight end sets, you know, uh, more than they usually do, I have to say. Not not a lot because they don't. They're not, they're not with league average in that time. But more than they usually do. But with the emergence of Isaiah Likely constantly making plays, uh, being all over the field, being a target, being a threat, and his versatility to be able to line line up in line and in the slot, um, they had to find a way to get him on the field. So that means more twelve personnel, more two tight end looks, and two wide receivers out there on the field. And I'm fine with that. The Ravens have to prioritize getting their best playmakers on the field, whoever that may be. They're going to have a nice mix of guys coming in and out the game, but Isaiah likely needs to play a lot. He just has to. Um, if we're going off of what we've seen in the in, in preseason, in training camp, he really hasn't had too many bad practices, if, if, that, if, if any at all, right? Every day he seems to be doing something else, making a play. Um, catch here, catch there, going over three defenders. Whatever that happens to be, Isaiah likely is a is a is been a focal point. All right, Mark Andrews, Bateman, 
likely they've all been guys that have had practice but they've been a focal point. Okay. Isaiah Likely is going to have to play a lot for the Ravens this year. And that's a good thing. More talent, more playmakers is always a good thing. So um, I know he's a rookie and things like that. He's going to have, he's going to, have to learn. He's going to have to adjust. We saw some issues with the blocking. But if he's in the game, I'm not too interested in him blocking. Obviously, he's going to have to block some. Because if he's in the game only on pass plays, that's a tell. That's a dead giveaway. And you don't want those in your offense. So he is going to have to block some. But mainly, he should be trying to run routes and catching the ball. Okay? Um, so offensively, that's my two big takeaways from training camp. Lamar Jackson in prime shape. Even though Lamar did slow down a little bit this last, Lamar and the offense, not just him, but the whole offense entirely, did slow down a little bit this last week because of the defense. Um, he's still in, in prime position to have an amazing, amazing season. And Isaiah likely is in prime position having a really, really good rookie year where he should play a lot, see some targets, and he's going to make a lot of plays. All right. Now, defensively, we just talked about the defense kind of slowing on the offense this last week, week and a half. Right. Um, to me, this this points to one of the biggest improvements the Ravens have made, and that's the defensive line. As a Ravens fan, we have seen great defenses. Right. We have seen defenses where we cause a lot of havoc with pressure and things like that. Safety's corners coming down. But. Outside of great pass rushers like, you know, Terrell Suggs, you know, even Haloli Nada getting there from time to time and, you know, going online down the history, it's been rare that we have a, we've had multiple options in the pass rush game. You know, um, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the roster and this is who I see that could be a pass rush threat on this team. We got guys like Justin Matabike who can cause pressure up the middle, Calais Campbell, uh, we know what his history is. Uh, uh, I think he's about, what, seven and a half sacks away from 100 for his career. Uh, Travis Jones, that was part of his big scouting report coming out of uh, UConn. And we saw it in the game one. When he uh, it preaches the game one, excuse me, when he uh, sacked Malik Willis. We saw that. Michael Pierce, I know we don't think of Michael Pierce as that guy. But Michael Pierce, first uh, for the Minnesota Vikings, had three sacks in eight games. Three sacks in eight games, okay? And this is at nose tackle. This is that nose tackle. So that's pretty damn impressive, right? So you get those guys coming down the middle. That's four guys right there down the middle. Then you throw in Owe, who's been literally unblockable according to everybody's reports in training camp. Literally unblockable. Every day can record multiple sacks, it seems like. Justin Houston, we know his track record. We know what he can do, all right? Um, I still have faith in Dalen Hayes because that OTA mini camp period, I'm still going to hold on to that. He was virtually unblockable as as well during that period. Okay. Uh Trader has been a little quieter. Versus the Titans, he did have a decent game. So I think Dalen Hayes can do that. And also he's gonna provide a lot dropping back in the coverage. So Dalen Hayes is gonna help out a lot. Right? Tyus Bowers or David Ojabo. Tyus Bowers has gotten better at pass rushing every year he's been in the league. And Ojabo, that's his calling card coming out of Michigan. What's his pass rush ability? Honestly, I cannot remember ever as a Ravens fan having this many options on the defensive line that can go get the quarterback. Um, so, with that being said, they've been causing the offensive line a lot of trouble, a lot of havoc in practice, and we saw them cause the Titans a lot of havoc in the game. I really think that the Ravens have a, a top-flight defensive line overall, not just one player here, one player there. But they have a depth of the position that I really haven't seen as a Ravens fan in quite some time. They have a lot of guys that can get after the passer. We're used to having to get after the passer with pressure, sending six, sending five, sending seven, you know, mixing up who's coming, who's going. You know, that's the Wink Martindale way. But with this defensive line, you don't have to do that. It looks like they have a lot of guys that can just naturally get there. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. And final takeaway. Okay. Um, <laughs> The $70 million man himself, Marcus Williams, he's going to allow the Baltimore Ravens to do a lot defensively because he's going to take care of that back end. So that means you can have guys who are, I don't want to say riskier, but they can take more chances on the ball because they have a true ball hawking safety behind them. Now, he has been he was a little quiet to start training camp, but he's really come on to end training camp. Two interceptions in, I believe, was it the last practice that was available to the public. Um, one on Lamar Jackson, one on Anthony Brown, 
uh, it's showing athleticism. I think one they said was like a toe tap grab. So he's going to allow the Ravens to play a lot more free. We got to think. We say this all the time. I say this all the time. Last year, the Ravens played with two strong safeties. You have to play. You have to play defense more cautiously because you have guys who aren't used to being that deep in the field. That's just the truth, right? That wasn't their strength. That wasn't that. That wasn't what they wanted to do. They had two guys that wanted to play in the box, but they both can't play in the box because somebody has to be deep. Marcus Williams is a true free safety. And he's going to allow the Ravens to have more freedom in that in in the pass defense. It really is. Then you marry that with the defensive line. The Ravens defense is going to be really scary. Okay, that's that's the point. What I just from what I'm hearing at training camp from the reporters and then seeing that how Marcus Williams is saying is growing in confidence, um, seem like seemingly each week with this week with the last week being his kind of his best week. He's only going to go up from here. That's how that's honestly how I feel. It's been a ramp up. He had to learn a defense. He was leaning on Chuck Clark to learn a defense. There's things like that. Chuck Clark was helping him out. Now he's taking that and he's he's ramping up. He's going up. So the Ravens defense at minimum should be a top five defense this year. From what from the time they have on the defense, from how the defense is playing in the training camp reports, we're hearing about it. Defensive line, unblockable. Pass coverage is playing pretty well. For the most part, it's playing pretty well. Obviously, guys get beat. It's the nature of the game. But for the most part, playing pretty well. Marcus Peters is back. Marlon Humphrey, I think, is going to be able to play in the slot some more. So, Marcus Williams, overall, is going to allow the Ravens defense a lot more freedom just because they know and trust they have somebody in the back end that's going to allow them to uh, be more aggressive. Marcus Williams can cover up some mistakes, all right? Um, so, that's why I really, really love the Marcus Williams signing. That, that true free safety the Ravens haven't had in a couple years it's really going to help out. So those are my main training camp takeaways for the Ravens coming up uh, for this season. We'll see if anything changes. But for right now, um, those are the main takeaways, man. You know, look, health is coming, right? Week one, we're going to be good. Lamar Jackson looking great. Isaiah likely needs to play a whole bunch. Marcus Williams uh, going to help the defense out. And the pass rush could be one of the best pass rushes we've seen as a collective for the Ravens in a long, long time. So uh, let me know what are some takeaways you guys got from the uh, training camp that we've heard about so far. And we'll talk about it in the comment section, man. It's your boy Gabriel. This is the Fan TV. I'm out.